Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. All year round, it wears work clothes. On holidays, it dresses up. To most people, Christmas brings happiness and prayer. To some, it brings heartbreak. Then my job gets tougher. I'm a cop. It was Thursday, December 22nd. We were working the night watch out of Homicide Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. We'd gotten a call that a nine-year-old boy was missing from his home. The evidence pointed to foul play. We had to check it out. I get it. Homicide Friday. Oh, yeah, Doherty. Uh-huh, yeah. What's that number? Right, I got it. Yeah, nine-year-old, huh? Well, how long has he been gone? Right. Well, how do you figure homicide? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, sure, we'll get right on it. Right. Anything? Doherty, Unit 113J. He and Levinson are out on Hollis Avenue trying to track down a nine-year-old boy. What's the story? Well, the kid's missing. Suspicion of foul play. How long has he been gone? About two hours. Kid was last seen playing in the backyard of his home. Yeah. Doherty says they checked over the yard. Find anything? Blood stains. Lots of them. They look new. Tom Doherty from Highland Park Juvenile was waiting for us in front of the house. We went down the driveway and into the backyard. Doherty told us that the boy's mother told him that she'd gone out to do some Christmas shopping at 11 o'clock that morning. And when she returned home at 2 p.m., the boy was gone. His name was Stanley Johnstone, age nine years. Ray Pinker started his preliminary investigation of the stains found on the patio. Type the blood first, Ray. Precipitin test won't run more than 20 minutes. Take three or four hours to run a blood grouping, though. Anything else you want to check? Now, let me borrow a scribe in an envelope, will you, Ray? Sure. Twenty-two caliber empty cartridge casing. I marked it for evidence. Doherty went on to tell us that he and his partner, Levinson, had talked with the neighbors. They could tell them nothing. He said they put out a missing broadcast on the boy and that the mother was at a loss to explain the boy's whereabouts. Blood stains, empty cartridge. Could mean a hundred things. Any ideas, Freddy? Yeah, just one, and I don't like it. 4.30 p.m., Thursday, December 22nd. The neighborhood search for nine-year-old Stanley Johnstone continued. Ray Pinker went back to the crime lab to start the precipitant test and the blood grouping. Levinson and his partner, Doherty, from Highland Juvenile, stood by. We called Captain Lorman and he arranged for a special detail to aid in the search for the missing boy. Frank and I questioned the boy's mother, a Mrs. Ruth Johnstone, a woman in her early 40s. She seemed fairly calm under the circumstances. Mrs. Johnstone, is your boy Stanley in the habit of wandering off without telling you where he's going? No, he's not in the habit of wandering off, but he has done it before. When was the last time, Miss Johnstone? <laughs> You don't have any children, do you, Sergeant Friday? No, ma'am, I'm not married. There comes that time in every young boy's life when he feels that it's time to leave home, go out on his own. Usually happens somewhere around 8 to 10. Yes, I think I know what you mean. I have a boy of my own. You know how it is. My husband and I scolded Stanley one afternoon after school, and he was quite put out about it. Thought George and I were unfair. 
packed a few of his things and left. How long was he gone? Oh, no time at all, about two hours. I was worried about him, but my husband said to leave him alone, said every boy had to go through that stage. Well, and you think he's run away from home again this time, do you? Yes, I think so. He's been gone about four hours now. I have a funny feeling about it. Well, did you and his father have some misunderstanding with the boy recently? That's just it. We haven't. I don't mind telling you, now that we're talking about it, I'm getting worried. Any place around that he might like to visit, a hobby shop or a playground, where he might be? Well, yes, there's Jensen's model shop, little Heidi Robinson, but I've already called all his friends and they have no idea where he is either. I see. We'd like a list of all of his friends and the places that he was known to frequent. Yes, all right, I'll give them to you. Where do you suppose he is? Where's your husband now, Mrs. Johnstone? At work. George works for the city. He's a fireman. Where's he stationed? Engine Company 12. He's working the A platoon. He'll be home tomorrow morning. I haven't told him Stanley's gone. Well, is there any chance that the boy might be down at the firehouse with his father? No, he seldom goes down there anymore. No, I, I don't think he's there. I'm awfully worried. May I call my husband? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Excuse me. I know George will be worried. Engine Company 12, please. Stanley's been gone too long. Hello? May I please speak with George Johnstone? This is Mrs. Johnstone. Thank you. I hate to call George at his work. Yes, ma'am. Does your husband own a gun? Yes, he does. What caliber, would you know? Well, it's a 45 automatic. He got it in the Army. George? This is Ruth George. Is Stanley down there with you by any chance? Oh. No, I can't find him anywhere. He wasn't here when I came home from doing my shopping. Were well, there are two policemen here? No, dear, I'll call you if we don't find him soon. All right, dear, yes, you too. Bye. I didn't think you'd be with George. That 45, is that the only gun in the house? Yes. Why are you asking about guns? Has anything happened you're not telling me about? No, ma'am, just routine checking. We'll have to take a look at that 45 if you don't mind. Well, maybe I should tell you, we do have another gun in the house, but it's all wrapped up. George bought it for Stanley's Christmas present. I wonder if we could see that, please. Well, yes. Do you have to unwrap it? I'm afraid so. Well, it's this way. It's in this closet. I think I can reach it. I can't hide it. Stanley must have found it. It's gone. There's the gift card and the box the gun came in. It was a rifle. I wonder if I could see that box. Oh, of course. How about it, Joe? Thursday, December 22nd, 5.15 p.m. The search for the missing boy continued. We checked the list of Stanley Johnstone's friends. None of them or their parents had any idea of his whereabouts. We talked with Doherty again. He'd been in touch with the detail combing the neighborhood. They found nothing. We went down to Hollis Avenue and 10th Street, the service station on the corner. Want a dime, Jeff? No, I don't. sign of him yet. Did you finish the precipitant yet? I see. Oh, we don't know. Oh, we didn't want to upset his mother any more than we had to. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can do it that way. What? What? Oh. Yeah, we'll transfer me over, will you, Ray? Yeah, thank you. Right, check you later, Ray. Well, hi, Captain. It's Friday. Yeah, well, we just left already. If you... Yep. Right? We'll stay on it. What Pinker have? It's human blood. He's working on the grouping now. He wanted to know the Johnstone boy's blood type. Something else. Yeah. There's another one missing. An eight-year-old boy. <laughs> p.m. We talked with Officer Doherty about the other missing boy. He told us that his name was Stephen Martin, eight years old. 
His family had just moved into the neighborhood. It seemed that no one besides the Martin family knew that the boys played together. We got a description of the Martin boy and put out a missing broadcast. We called the Johnstone's family doctor. He told us that Stanley's blood type was type O. At 7 p.m., we talked with Mrs. John Martin. Stevie told me he was just going out to play. He said he'd be home by 6 for dinner. Yes, ma'am. It's always prompt, never overstays his playtime. It's after 7, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, 5 after. You sure Mrs. Johnston doesn't know where the boys are? She has no idea, Mrs. Martin. It's terrible, just awful. I feel there's more to this thing, something you're not telling me. Well, there's no use to upset you until we know a few things for sure. Then you are holding back something. Please try not to worry, Miss Martin. There are certain questions we have to ask, routine questions in any kind of investigation. Anything else you want to know? Yes, what's your boy's blood type? It's a funny question. Do you think anything's happened to him? Have you found him and you're not telling me? No, ma'am, we haven't found him. We don't think anything's happened to him. Blood type? Yes, ma'am. I think I have it written down in Stevie's baby book. Yes, here it is. It's typo. Thank you. I wonder if I might use your phone. Yes, of course, in the hall. Thank you. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Just checking back. I got the blood type of the two missing boys for you. Yeah, typo. No, both boys, typo. Yeah. Right. Frank, see you in a minute. Right, Joe. Excuse me, Miss Martin. Pinker just finished the blood grouping. Bad. The stains, both typo. December 22nd. Still no sign of either of the missing boys. Captain Lorman went back to headquarters to direct the search from there. He dispatched another detail of 50 men to aid in the hunt for the missing youngsters. 8.30 p.m. We went up the block to see Mrs. Johnstone. Her husband had quit work early and returned home. We talked with him. He could tell us nothing more than we already knew. We still had not informed either of the families about the blood stains and the empty cartridge casing which had been discovered in the backyard of the Johnstone home was more than possible that they had a right to know about our findings, but Frank and I felt there was no cause to add to the distress of the two families at this time. If the two missing boys were found alive and well, then the blood stains and the cartridge would be of no concern to the relieved parents. At 8.40 p.m., Frank and I left the Johnstone house and went to the home of Mr. and Mrs. John Martin. Miss Martin, you say your husband works in the market? Yes, he telephoned about 15 minutes ago and said he was closing up right away. He'll be here any minute. I do wish Stevie would call or come home. It's so cold out tonight. All he had on was a thin cotton shirt. Well, try not to worry. We're doing everything we can. He'll be all right. Stevie's father's such a sensitive man. He and the boy are so close. I know he's terribly upset. Now, you say you looked every place. There's no place else the boy might be. Oh, no place, no. If anything's happened to the boy, it'll just kill John. You just take it easy, Mrs. Martin. Sit still. I'll get it. Thank you. Joe. Yeah. The Johnstone kid, he'd been found. He's home, Sergeant. He's come home. Thank God he's all right. Well, where's he been? Did he tell you? No, he didn't. He's acting so strange. I've never seen him like this. How do you mean, Mrs. Johnstone? Well, he just came in the front door, said, hello, Mom, sat down in the chair and stared at the floor. Won't talk to his father or me. Mind if we talk to him? Well, no, go ahead. I asked him about the little Martin boy, but he wouldn't tell me a thing. Where's he now? In the dining room. Looks all right, Joe. Yeah. Son. Son, this is a police officer. He wants to talk to you. Well, don't be afraid, dear. He only wants to ask you some questions. Son. You see, Sergeant? Stanley. Look at me, son. Come on, youngster. Get your head up. Come on now. That's better. Had your mother pretty worried, you know that? You want to tell us where you've been? You should try and get him to eat a little something. You hear that, son? You want something to eat? Stanley, 
There's another little boy up the street who hasn't come home. You know where he is? His father and mother are worried about him, too, just like your folks were. You've got to help us find him, son. I killed him. I killed Steve. With the 22. We were only playing, but I killed him. How do you know you killed him? Maybe he's only hurt now, isn't that it? No, he's dead. I know he's dead. The gun went off. We forgot we put bullets in there. Where is he, Stanley? I hit him. I was scared. I didn't want anybody to find him. I don't want to go to jail. Where'd you hide him, son? Out in the back under some leaves. I didn't mean it. He was my pal. You want to show us where, Stanley? Yes, I'll show you. Please don't send me to jail. Thursday, December 22nd. Nine-year-old Stanley Johnstone led the way out beyond the backyard of his home. He showed us the wagon he moved the body in. Stephen Martin. There was a single bullet wound in his chest just below his heart. He was dead. I knew where it was, and I got it. There was a box of bullets with it. Were you pointing the gun at Stephen? No, sir. No, sir, I wasn't. It was Steve's turn to play with it. I was chasing him, and he tripped over that stump there, and the gun hit him in his stomach and went off. Why do you think you killed him if you're telling us the truth? I'm telling the truth. Honest, that's the truth. All right, I believe you, son, but why do you think you killed him? It was my gun. Steve would still be alive if I didn't go get it. Should have waited till Christmas. It's all my fault. Where have you been all this time? Right here. With Steve. What were you doing, son? I was praying. I was praying for God to make you alive again. <laughs> After a thorough investigation, Frank and I were convinced that the shooting of Stephen Martin was accidental. All evidence indicated that the Johnstone boy was telling the truth. We put in a call to the coroner's office and acquainted him with the facts. He designated a local mortuary to handle the body pending autopsy and granted us permission to remove the body to the Martin home. Mrs. Martin collapsed. The family doctor was called. Frank and I sat in the living room to wait for John Martin, the dead boy's father. Edith? Edith? Mr. Martin? Yes. You the police? Yes, sir. Where's Edith? Where's my wife? Well, has my boy come home yet? Well, have you found him? Yes, sir. Well, where is he? Stevie? Stevie? Where's Steve? He's hurt, isn't he? Yes, sir. Well, where is he? I want to see him. He's hurt pretty bad, Mr. Martin. Well, where is he? I want to see him. How bad? Pretty bad. Yes, sir. 
Will you go with me? Yes, sir, sure. Don't make it any harder on yourself, Mr. Martin. I see my boy. Stevie. <laughs> Nice things for you for Christmas. Everything you wanted. I got you the three new cars for the train. And the, the one, the one with the searchlight on it. It really works, Stevie. It really works. And and the <laughs> the, the new switch you wanted. And a lot more track. You know. Now. Now you can have a big light out. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you know that catches me you wanted? I got that for you too. The cowboy outfit. <laughs> <laughs> see that boy. We had no idea what the dead boy's father had in mind. We didn't feel that we should try to restrain him. We went along with him up the street to the Johnstone home. I'm Stevie's father. Where's your boy? Oh, I'm sorry. We bought the gun and you're going to tell him not to use it unless his father was with him until he learned how to treat firearms. Where's your boy? He's right here. Won't you come in? It's all right, Miss Johnstone. I think that'd be a fine idea, son. Well, what's it all proved, Joe? You don't give a kid a gun for Christmas. December 24th, a coroner's inquest was held at the county morgue, Hall of Justice, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that inquest. The coroner's jury ruled that the death of Stephen Martin was the result of an accident. 